Bitcoin ultimately is going to come down to two things, money supply and network effects. And so, and that's because that's what's driven the first 10 years and it was easy to go from zero to 100 million people. Institutions hoarding Bitcoin is, is not going to drive network nope. effects. And as, as a company that actually sells to institutions, I'm 100% positive that's right. It's the consumers coming 95% I mean, positive that's right. And so the question is going to be how and why are we going to get a billion consumers to be holding and or actively using Bitcoin in the sense of a verb, moving it, not just holding it, either way is fine. Whether they're holding it or moving it, I don't really care. To actually do it, that's unclear. And right now, the only way they can do it is on exchanges. That's not gonna work for a billion people, zero chance, because people just aren't traders. So then the question becomes, okay, how are we gonna simplify this for a billion people to wanna hold Bitcoin, right? For me, when I think about stable coins and other things which aren't really Bitcoin, totally different question. Neo banks and other banks and applications will, will figure out stable coins and making DeFi accessible. But for Bitcoin itself, that's a different issue. And I don't think we've figured out yet how to make Bitcoin accessible to a billion people. I think I'm at currently, just based upon price movements and a little bit of reallocation, I'm at 40% Bitcoin, 45% Ethereum, and via our, our asset management team, I, I think personally I'm at about 15% different alts. And I, I think that's exactly where I want to be. Um, and I think that uh, I'm looking at, at, you know, as at kind of the macro, I'm looking at Bitcoin 2030, probably in the million dollar range. I think it's a combination of the network effects um, and, and uh, the money supply changing. And I think, I think the, the 30 year channel for interest rates gets back on track. For the, the value of Bitcoin, the number of people times the number of dollars being moved in the life or death stack is very, is very, very small yeah. because the GDPs of those countries is very small. So it doesn't actually change the value of the relative network effects, you know, via versus the rich person stack, which is unfortunately going to dwarf the other one, at least for, for a while. The most incredible thing about this to me is that Bitcoin is actually playing out Hayek's playbook for private money to the letter. And there was no internet when he wrote about this. There was obviously no Bitcoin as a result. There was no smartphones. It's, it's, it's doing exactly what he said would happen to a point. He said, first, if you had private money with a, with a, with a controlled supply, it would be hoarded first because it would be incredibly valuable. Then it would be spent because eventually it would become too valuable and it would make no sense to hoard it anymore. The question becomes, as you get those network effects and, and its value goes through the roof, right, because it's being hoarded, is it viable to spend it because we have a means for a billion people to do it? As it relates to Bitcoin, we don't have that decentralized means today. If you look at where Ethereum's going versus where Bitcoin's going, the other layer one and layer two protocols, the divergence is significant, mm. right? And I think, but the relevancy of Bitcoin now depends upon a few things, which have, in my opinion, little to do with the rest of crypto, right? I, I think a lot of it is gonna come down to now uh, what is the incentive for developers to make Lightning really usable? Mm -hmm. Can it scale to a billion users? That's the, the big, big question now. Because the layer one, it's, it's, it's not quite you know, uh, atomic gold yet in terms of like it can be changed, but it's going to be really effing hard to change it. Uh, those of us who were pushing for bigger blocks, you know, we know that now. Um, because the developers have no incentive. I like, go, oh, Bitcoin's down. Like, in the last two years, the Fed, in their infinite wisdom, created 50% of all the dollars that existed in the history of our republic. 248 years, printed half the money. So what should have happened to the price of Bitcoin? It should have doubled. It did exactly that. Exactly doubled. Stocks, all-time, well, not all-time highs lately, but people talk about the all-time highs. The price of right. Bitcoin is, no matter what happens to Ethereum after the merge, before, who gives a hell? It, it's, it's how is the network continuing to grow? How many users? How many new companies are being formed? How many augmentations of an old? Because there's two ways to, to innovate. You can be a big E entrepreneur. You can invent something new. Mark Andreessen creates the browser, creates the internet. Okay, dollars are currency, yen is currency, euros are currency, they are backed by debt. They are not money. Money is gold, it has been for 5,000 years. But gold is not very divisible, it's not very portable. And so Bitcoin has a, a use case as digital gold. Now, gold is not money supply. 
It's just not. It is a piece, to your point, it's the foundation, okay? Central banks own it, use it then to create fiat currency on top of that using debt. Now, could that all be replaced with stable coins and other crypto? Sure. But at the end of the day, that migration of financial services and rehypothecation and all the things that we do to make the world a better place, everyone's like, you know, you can't rehypothecate, that's wrong. I surf at night on spaces and I'll go to the, the Bitcoin space. I'm like, get out of here, you shitcoiner. I'm like, what are you talking about? I have more Bitcoin than you do. And they're like, well, you own Ethereum and you own a Solana and you're a shitcoiner. Like, Stop, okay? Then I'll go to a Solana space. I'm like, get out of here, you maxi. I'm like, I own more Solana than you. What? They're like, you own Bitcoin and that's a... And so this tribalism needs to end. The, the idea that, that they're mutually exclusive. Now look, the $64 trillion question, as far as I'm concerned, is are we going to have a single stack bitcoin lightning l3 l4 all built on bitcoin d5 for big okay today not possible bitcoin is up exactly what it should be from the beginning of the I, creation I of money. but what happened was price does not equal value the value of the bitcoin network is determinable to a very high degree of certainty using metcalf's law Right? Number of participants, transaction size, exactly. all of that is determinable. 100%. What happened last, a year, a year and a half ago, February, the first case, and then again in, through November, was stupidity. Dumb people borrowing too much money and levering up Bitcoin and pushing the price, someone's called manipulation, to levels that exceeded the value. And any time that happens, that's true today. Stocks today are overvalued relative to their value. They're in the 93rd percentile. They've only been more expensive, 7% of all of history. Today, Bitcoin is in the two and a half percentile cheap to its history. Fair value Bitcoin somewhere in the low 30s, high 20s. At 20,000, it's below fair value. So that, and that's the reaction to the tightening. But if you look at, we created 50% more dollar, 50% of the dollars, Bitcoin should be up 100%. It went from 10 to 20. It's exactly where it should be. We're not having inflation. We don't have inflation. We have currency devaluation. And this is how empires end. Every empire in the history of mankind has ended the same way. Cronyism replaces capitalism. Then the people at the top overspend. They get into debt that they can't pay back. And when you have too much debt, you have four options. You can pay it back. You could tax all the wealth of all the people in America. All the wealth, forget income, all the wealth, you could not pay the debt back. You can restructure it, but then you gotta have someone take the other side. China stopped buying our debt. Russia stopped buying our debt. The only people that are buying our debt are stablecoin issuers, which is kind of interesting. Okay, then, which is interesting, it's actually interesting, which is the one reason stablecoins might be allowed to exist because they will buy the toilet paper that the... I, I don't think there's anything more important than Bitcoin. Like, none of this exists without Bitcoin. So that is the pure collateral at the heart of everything. At the heart of the bank is the pure collateral of Bitcoin. So, it, you know, is it a digital gold or whatever, whatever it is, none of this exists without that. So the value of that will never go away.